I lied. I'm sorry. I just thought that title was hilarious. Merry belated Christmas, motherfuckers, and welcome to Purposeless Rabbit Holes, where today we'll be discussing 2018's best worst game, one of the foulest failures of the generation, none other than The Quiet Man. This infamous interactive cinematic train wreck was developed by Human Head Studios, the devs that made Defiance and fucking Prey? Wait, 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 what the fuck happened? Well, I'll tell you what happened. A year after the studio made The Quiet Man, they shuttered their doors for good. That's right, baby, we got a studio sinker on the menu tonight. Oh, and it's gonna be a filling meal, I can just tell. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I'm licking my chops right now. The game, or what I could make of it, at least. The Quiet Man is a third-person brawler with live-action elements, which is to say it's a bad beat-em-up wrapped in an even worse student film. It's kind of like that TV show game starring Iceman, but with no money. This shit is quantum broke. There's jokes in this episode, everybody. There's jokes. <laughs> Fun fact, this video only exists so I could use that joke. I wrote that joke like nine months ago, and I'm very proud of it, honestly, but it's only downhill from here. So to get right to the heart of the matter, The Quiet Man is one of the best worst games I have ever played. I really seriously wish I recorded me and my girlfriend playing this game because I was reduced to tears three separate times over the course of this game. This shit made me laugh myself into a fucking panic attack. I felt like I was going to die I was laughing so hard. Mostly because my girlfriend is very funny, but also because the game is incomprehensible and so, so terrible. It stuns me that this was made by adults. Oh, oh, fucking hell, where do I even start? Uh, okay, I'm just gonna summarize the game's story from beginning to end, and we're gonna touch on various elements as I go. So the very first thing we see upon pressing start to begin the video game is... Stock footage. Clearly stock footage. It's painfully transparent that this is stock footage. Oh my god, it's Alex Mercer. No, it's actually The Quiet Man. A 12-year-old deaf boy whose job is beating people up and stealing their cocaine. We begin our story by following the quiet man, whose real name is Dane, because they definitely wanted Dane DeHaan for this role, like they wanted Nathan Fillion for Nathan Drake. I'm just guessing here, but come on, look at this motherfucker. We follow Dane through the streets of the one block of New York City the developers were able to close off for filming, and we see this exchange between our hero and a hot dog man. The savages are out to like it. Be careful. The quiet man then walks a little further down the street and reaches into his hot dog bag where he finds a crudely scrawled note indicating where he can find gangsters with cocaine to steal. He finds said gangbangers in a small studio backlot dressed up like an alley, and I'm just gonna let the following scene play out real quick for a second here as a sort of litmus test, because if you aren't sold on this game by what you see in the next couple seconds, then this is probably not your thing. You, you can move on. There's nothing to see here. No, this vato cut steps to my lady, my yeha, and says, <laughs> Do you get it? So then out from the shadows creeps the quiet man, here to interrupt these dirty dealers' dastardly deeds with his fists of fury. What the hell, man? You stupid or very stupid? Muevase! Okay, and coming up, just watch this. This is like a hard comedy edit right here. The way it just lingers on that shot of the dude with the bandana, that shit's hilarious. That was my first big laugh of the night. But the awkward silence of that moment isn't just a bad edit. No, from this point on, and why it starts here, I have no clue. But after this, there is absolutely no dialogue in the entire game. So just know that everything I'm saying about the story from here on out is purely guesswork because every single cutscene after the first three minutes sounds like this.
On that note, as our protagonist points out in the opening scene, he is deaf, and we live the rest of the game through his ears, so to speak. He's got your classic case of deafness, and by that I mean he can only hear his own movements and dramatic sound cues. Wait, no, I'm sorry, he can also hear Final Fantasy menu sounds uh, whenever anybody speaks. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this man is struck with CBSD. Charlie Brown's selective deafness. Oh, good grief. This is dead ass. Some Charlie Brown ass bullshit. So let's talk about the deafness element real quick. Having a deaf protagonist is a very unique, commendable, and interesting selling point with which the developers do absolutely jack and shit as this game wholly misunderstands and mishandles the concept of its main character. As previously mentioned, I can only assume the lack of sound in the game is a way to replicate how Dane experiences life as a deaf person to some extent, but like, can he read lips? It really seems like he can read lips, and if he can, why are there no subtitles when people are speaking to him? And especially why are there no subtitles the handful of times the story actually uses ASL? I'll tell you why, to deliberately confuse the fuck out of you with smoke and mirrors to make the story they're telling seem more complex and mysterious than it actually is. And because of that, Dane's deafness ends up coming across as a disrespectful and lazily tacked on gimmick, something you could probably pluck out of the story and nothing would change, as it's only really there to help facilitate the developer's pretentious bullshit narrative and game without sound concept. Also, side note, but why were the gangsters and the hot dog vendor audible for like one scene each before all the sound cut off? Back to the narrative though, our quiet man is talking to the green gang member dudes and he isn't about to put up with no shit in no dirty alleys, so he proceeds to discombobulate. It's just like that scene from Sherlock Holmes. Just as good. From here we transition from live action into gameplay, which, as you can see, is seamless. This alley scene is our first taste of the quiet man's quote unquote gameplay as well, which can be neatly summed up as Yakuza if Yakuza sucked ass. Yakuza for babies, or men dressed as babies. You press square to attack, triangle to more attack, X to dodge, look at this, down to the fucking blue glow for special cinematic attacks. Ha! Get him quiet man, ha! Heat action! Pick up the salt, put a salt in his eye, heat action! You basically just mash buttons and the guy punches other guys, it's dirt fucking simple. For all its heady artistic pretensions, this game's design is at the same level as cutting edge tech from 1987. This is an action game from 2018, fucking eight years after Vanquish, this is not acceptable. Our man of quietude proceeds to break into the building guarded by our green gangsters and inside he finds more green gangsters. And it's just punch 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 move to the next room, punch 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 move to the next room. Eventually. Dane walks into a third or fourth room and sees some spray painting that causes a flashback to when he was a child. And you can tell it's him as a child because apparently he's had the exact same haircut for 15 fucking years. So I guess his mother was killed by some random child actor and this kid grew up to become the leader of this gang of green dudes. How do I know this? Because they have a framed picture of their gang leader in their crack house. This place looks like a tidal wave of liquid PCP came through, but goddamn. That frame is immaculate. They even posed the lamp to give it like this back highlight. Look at that, one of these dudes is an artist. After fighting through some of the most forgettable game environments of all time, our stalwart hero corners a dude with a briefcase and acquires it through some swiggity sweet kung fu moves. If you looked up lame, in the dictionary, Dane proceeds to give the stolen briefcase that is, yes, full of cocaine to his gangster friend, who is also his boss and also was involved in the killing of his mother because the young framed picture gangster stole his shoes and they were fighting with a gun over the shoes and the quiet man, who was actually a quiet boy with the same haircut, ran up on them because apparently he already knew the one kid and for some reason he runs up on these two dudes wrestling with a gun over shoes and his mother gets shot? Ah yes, the classic hero origin story. Ugh, I'm sorry. Can we take a break? I feel my brain getting softer with each new sentence. The process of writing this video has been brain in smoothening. I am not in the same IQ bracket that I was two weeks ago. Ugh, I'm so mad. <laughs> 
Okay, so where were we? Uh, our protagonist returns to the club run by a gangster friend who I think I'll call Stencils from here on out. Uh, the Quiet Man returns to the club and it's got like a Coors Light logo as a name. I don't remember the real name of the place, but I do remember it looked exactly like a Coors Light sign. Uh, uh, oh, oh, he sees a picture of a lady who sings at the club and that's like his love interest for the game. Except, weirdly, the love interest is played by the same actress who plays the mother in the flashbacks, so... Don't want to dig too deep into that. Either way, after handing off his patch of the devil's dandruff, the quiet man shows Stencils a picture of that graffiti that gave him a flashback, and Stencils ain't having it. I don't know why. Quiet man then goes to the back room of the club, and then... God. This video's just gonna be, and then, and then, and then, and, it, and honestly, it's because I don't know what happened in the game. I was thinking maybe if I just take it scene by scene, I'll reach some kind of profound understanding by the end of the whole thing, but so far I am coming up embarrassingly short. I am more confused than when I started. Honestly, I, I, I don't even know where I am right now. Right after the cocaine giving scene, we find out that apparently the gangster friend is dating singer lady who Quiet Man has a hard on for and he goes to visit her by taking the subway and beating people up and having an unrelated flashback about his abusive father who, if the scenery is any indication, seemed to live in a haunted house and then, uh, he just gets out of the subway and creeps on her from across the street, pining for her. It's so romantic. I love her, but we can never be together because I'm deaf and hot and steal people's coke. Smeagol looking ass. Then friend gangster pulls up and tries to seduce single lady with some flowers and some smooch smooches, some smooth talking, but she's not into it. So maybe the two of them are actually broken up. I have no answers, guys. I'm sorry. Trying to write out a plot synopsis for this thing is just frustrating to no end. Eventually, we get to the inciting incident that kicks off the main plot, which is when Dane is sitting at the Coors Light Club where his gangster boss is based out of, watching the singer sing and giving her weird fuck me eyes, when all of a sudden a bird masked man shows up and shit starts popping off. During the chaos of the ensuing siege, we get the reappearance of our favorite character, gangster number one from the opening scene. I cannot stand this guy. He thinks he's so good. He thinks he's giving the performance of a fucking lifetime right now. I can't even hear what he's saying, and I know it's terrible. After a couple more minutes of reliably painful beat-em-up gameplay, we see that the intruders were here with the express goal of kidnapping the singer lady. Oh no! Our main man tries to save her. He chases the birdman out to a sketchy van, but still, the fiend slips through his fingers. Mostly because with those fingers, he grabbed the end of a cattle prod which is precisely what you don't want to do when fighting somebody that has a cattle prod. I guess this is what happens when you hire a skincare YouTuber as your main enforcer. Although he does give hell a hella chase, starts bowling down the alley the second he gets back up and whoa! God, that was fucking sick! And there's more gameplay after this, but really, truly there is nothing to say about it. It's as if this game was meant to be playable for people in comas. But I got plenty to say about this. <laughs> the quiet twink subsequently spin kicks his way through a bunch more green guys because I guess the green gang is helping out the bird masked man for reasons unbeknownst to me because again, no words. And after a couple more stock footage transitions, the chase continues with more sweet ass parkour. <laughs> Following a multitude of forgettable fights that aren't worth showing on the screen past the end of the first half of this sentence, Dane tracks down the bird boy and fights him in his weird sex maniac shrine room where there is a microwave with a candle on it. <laughs> Why? The boss fight is short, but nevertheless quickly becomes tedious due to the gameplay being as shallow and unappealing as a puddle of piss. Dane eventually conquers the bird masked man in mortal combat and with his final blow he kicks him. Right in the balls. Now at this point you know this foul assailant isn't just any normal man because a normal man would not be able to walk that shit off. Only a supernatural entity could handle a cock strike of that caliber. His balls got hit so hard that he was launched through a door. Even after that brutal beatdown, the masked man manages to escape the scene, and the quiet man dips out as well, but not before getting the information that he needs. I really wish we could hear that information so we know why he needs it. After the 500th battle in a decrepit crack house, we meet a guy who I'm just gonna call Father Cop for the time being. He's some dude who helped Dane after his mother was killed and he seems to be a surrogate father of some sort. Maybe took him away from the other guy who was beating him up in a haunted house. We get a brief introduction scene with Father Cop where he's clearly like, quiet son, you're living on the edge and you gotta pull back before you burn. You're gonna burn like Icarus flying too close to the sun or some self-important bullshit like that. And afterwards, uh, 
afterwards is where I really lose the thread, TBH. Yeah, I know. Strange to say after everything so far has been so fucking nonsensical, but after we meet Father Cop, we cut to an astoundingly confusing scene of Dane in Gangster Friend's penthouse, which I think connects to the club, and apparently at some point Dane blacked out and attacked people at the club? Question mark? And at Gangster Friend's place, he finds a box. Oh no. And in that box he finds the mask and a dress, and he wails into the night. And we don't need to hear his scream to know that he's screaming. After this scene of acting in underlined bold all caps bendy word art font, we get another scene of uh, acting. I'm getting like these waves of sympathy embarrassment chills. I don't know how much more of this I can take. After all this turmoil is set up and our cast of characters are set against each other, we get a sequence of our silent warrior fighting his way into the apartment of Framed Picture Gangster from earlier, who is the leader of Green Gang. I'm sorry, once again, no words. I do not know any of these characters' names. So this guy's a fucking enigma. He is a gangster who killed Quiet Man's mom at the ripe old age of... 15 to 25, but I think on top of that, he's also some kind of famous sports figure? Like a football or soccer player or something. Because he's got this framed jersey and recurring number throughout his apartment, and I'm thinking the green of the gang is actually the green of his sports team. And so does that mean that the green guys are like sports fans? Is it a gang of sports enthusiasts? And, and what is the team that Sports Gangster is a part of? Who are they? What, like... Oh. Like, what, like the New York Greens? The quiet man fights through waves and waves of greens on greens and finally confronts the man himself after annihilating his army of punch sponges. We then get this epic wordless monologue that I'm sure would explain a lot could we hear it as it goes on for three plus minutes, which sounds fucking insane because it is, and then another boss fight happens. Like the last one, there's really not much to say about this encounter. Uh, the only really notable detail is that Sports Gangster has a gold statue of himself in his room, so... That's not a marker for success, I don't know what is. After mashing your face button of choice for a few minutes, the quiet man expectedly does some lame-ass fucking embarrassing bullshit, punches him out a window or some shit. And then Singer Lady comes out of absolutely fucking nowhere. Okay, even though the last time we saw her she was kidnapped and tied up with like a bag over her head, how did she escape that situation? Guess it doesn't matter. Good alternate title for the game, by the way. Point is that Quiet Man has officially rescued Mom Girlfriend. Good job, Quiet Man. Round of applause from the studio audience, please. But then all of a sudden, out of the dark of the night, Punished Stencil's friend gangster shows up to throw a wrench in the gears by going full Ike Turner and aggressively kidnapping our edible singer-songwriter. I'm sorry, I'll cut it out with the nicknames. Also, not that important, but I'm just now realizing that this woman gets kidnapped twice in one night after the great betrayal of the quiet man which sounds like a renaissance rendition of these events would somebody please do that for me suddenly father cop comes to the rescue and instead of maybe taking dane down to the precinct or letting him get some sleep after surviving a gang war and explosion he gives our protagonist a ride to the villain's place so he can punch more people oh what a what a great dad and during the car ride father cop is constantly to whoa did you see that? Uh, okay, uh, so in another instance of Dane's deafness being weirdly executed and ill-communicated to the audience, Father Cop and several other characters throughout the game talk while Dane is not looking at them, as if they don't remember that he's deaf. Like, why are you going on like this, Father Cop? <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with this dude's eyes? Why do they glint like that? Why are they so bloodshot? Someone get this motherfucker some ferretears! In time, our pair of unlikely... Heroes pull up on Club Coors for the final confrontation, which is, you guessed it, tapping square and triangle for 45 minutes. After that, you get two short boss battles and you're done. The game's pretty goddamn short. It's like four hours if you don't fail a fight. But you're got you you uh, yep you you're gonna fail a fight. Particularly this end game fight you're seeing on the screen here. This shit in the club had me popping blood vessels. Like, I was sweating profusely by the time I wrapped that shit up. Easily one of the most frustrating gaming moments 
of my life. This game was built for group combat in the sense of three to four enemies. It was not built for six to eight enemies, and that's exactly what the game lazily heaves your way in the last hour. This fight takes about 10 minutes of uninterrupted combat to beat, and you can take maybe three hits before dying here and having to start all the way from the beginning, so it just turns into this relentless fucking bukkake of fists and feet that will actively ruin your day outside of the game. <sighs> all that's left now is the ending. Uh, and I've gotta be honest, I do not understand what happened at all, so I'm just gonna summarize what I saw. Gangster friend is bad. Gangster friend cries a single solitary tear and shoots father cop, and maybe Dane. Can't recall, don't care. The quiet man then dons the mask of the bird and becomes the bird masked quiet man. And apparently this mask is like the Jim Carrey mask, but without any of the fun stuff. It just makes it fast and immune to bullets. So now the quiet man has basically gone Super Saiyan and has superpowers. After a couple boring fights, we get a showdown on the roof with a friend gangster who's got Singer Lady tied up, Dan beats the shit out of him because he has superpowers. Fuck is Stencil's gonna do about that other than kick his gun into the air and look hilarious. What is that face? But then, after Dane channels the fuck out of the Matrix and dodges bullets for a few minutes, the mask comes off and Father Cop comes out and puts it on and becomes the villain? He was always the villain? Who cares? I don't care. Do you care? The story wraps up with Dane and Father Cop seemingly beating each other to death and Sexy Mommy comes over to comfort the quiet man in his last moments. Thank God he's dead. The very last thing that happens though is that we get some kind of uh, post-credits James Bond song, which was like the final breaking point for me where my brain snapped in half. While listening to this thing, I had like a Mike Stoklasa-esque breakdown where every line of the song was making me laugh harder and harder to the point where I was keeled over in searing pain, like howling in agony. This game as a whole is like a test to see how stressed a person can get watching something that makes no sense. Just listen to this pretentious fucking garbage. It's like the song is randomly generated. This calls for drastic measures. When you're so far away, so far from pleasure, can somebody mediate? Cause your love comes across as hate. Keep in mind, I'm hearing this after three straight hours of this. Just punch, punch, punch. What the fuck is going on? Get this bitch out of my face. I just want something to make sense. And then the first words I hear since the beginning of the game is this shit. It's like the game was trying to kill me by suffocation. In conclusion. Ah, so that's really it. That's the quiet man. There is another mode you can play after beating the game that actually gives you the dialogue, but like I mentioned a little bit ago, I don't care. I've already written over 4,000 words about this thing. It, it will not get one more out of me. Maybe I'll stream it or record myself playing it someday. See what I missed. See if any of my MatPat theories hold water. So now that everything is said and done, what did we learn here today? Following a multitude of forgettable fights that aren't worth showing on the screen past the end of the first half of this sentence, Dane tracks down the bird boy and fights him in his weird sex maniac shrine room, where there is a microwave with a candle on it. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Following a multitude of forgettable fights that aren't worth showing on screen past the end of the first half of this sentence, Dane tracks down the bird boy and fights him in his weird sex maniac shrine room, where he has a microwave with a candle on it. <laughs> <laughs> I've laughed recording a script in a million years. <sighs> oh, shit. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm like a crazy person right now. Jesus Christ. Following a mod. <laughs> Fuck!